which means all praises to Yahweh, which is the Heavenly Father's name, Bahasham, in the name Yahweh Shai, is the name of His only begotten Son. <clears throat> Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and salutations to all you brothers who preach the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, uh, just getting the time to get to um, get to this lesson. I was watching a video a couple of hours ago that Apostle Gabar did. You know, which is a Yapa video, which is um, Shalom. this video right here, which is Great Millstone Mailbag number 352. It says, even a heathen has more integrity than Israelite sellouts, you know? And he went into the lesson of how um, Balaam didn't take that purse from Balak, man, you know? And Balaam, being a heathen, he had more integrity <laughs> to follow uh, the word of the Lord, man. Because he said he will he will not bless or curse, but only uh, uh, that what the Lord allows him to do. You know, so he didn't uh, 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 go out of his own belly or, you know, so to speak. But um, that inspired me, you know, to um, sit here meditating in the spirit. You know, a couple examples came out to me, you know, so um, Lord willing, I'm going to name this lesson examples of integrity, you know. And um, without further ado, I'm going to just get into it. This is um, 1 Kings 22. I'm going to start at the top. It says, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of Yahweh by Sham Yahushai today. Which Jehoshaphat, being the king of Judah, uh, he did those things which is right in the eyes of the Lord, meaning he he, he walked in the law, statutes, and commandments. You know? And the uh, king of Israel, which is, if I'm not mistaken, at the time, it was Ahab, which he was a wicked king, you know. He walked not in the, uh, uh, in the law, statutes, and commandments, you know. He served Baal, you know. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the prophet actually cussed Jehoshaphat out about um, going to go help Ahab, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Sirach tells you to know who thou do is good unto. But that's another lesson for another time. This is verse 6. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of Yahweh besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said, uh, <clears throat> so like, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Amla, by whom we may inquire of Yahweh, but I hate him, for he doeth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Reason being, why? Because Ahab was a wicked ass king, man. So Micah I would come and judge his ass, man. He would tell him, Hey, what, what's coming to him if he don't repent? You know? Isaiah, the 30th chapter, man. Our people want to hear uh, uh, deceitful things, they want to hear smooth things, you know? They don't want to hear the straight and skinny, man. That Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah gonna deal with your ass if you continue down that path. They don't want to hear those things, you know. <laughs> Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Hanaah, made him horns of iron and he said thus saith yahweh by sham yahushai with these shalt thou push the syrians until thou hast consumed them and all the prophets prophesied saying it's like and all the prophets prophesied so saying go up to ramoth gilead and prosper for yahweh shall deliver it into the king's hand and the messenger that was going to call micah i spake unto him saying behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth, 
Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micah, I said, as Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai liveth, what Yahweh saith unto me, that will I speak. And that's a man of integrity, man. Because uh, uh, starting with the apostles and elders, a great millstone on down to us younger brothers, man. Hey, we speak only what the book says, man. We speak only the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, not of our own mouth, you know. Not being a sellout for Satan, spiritually or physically, man. Walking in our integrity, man. And Micah, I, uh, one of our righteous forefathers, is a perfect example of that. Verse 15. So he came to the king, hey, hey, and, and, and he was by himself against hundreds of prophets of Baal, man. Because you got all these guys that talk about views and numbers and shit, man. You know? Micah I stood by himself against hundreds of prophets of Baal. Likewise, Elijah, man. Elijah stood against all those prophets of Baal, man. It was hundreds of them, man. Likewise, today, that represents the two-thirds of Israel and the one-third, man. The two-thirds is always a bigger number. So you niggas can have that, man. All these niggars, these whole-ass niggas want titles, man. They want to be called elders or leaders or they want some type of fame. Well, you got it, man. You niggas are the leaders and the elders of the two-thirds, man. The biggest camp in Israel. Congratulations, man. Verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micah, I, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of Yahweh? Right. So verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not had uh, slacking. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And Yahweh said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace, which is him prophesying the death of Ahab, man. You know. There's also a, a the wisdom of uh, Yahweh Basham Yahshua's manifold, man. It's one of the precepts to show that the lost sheep of the house of Israel is talking about Israelites, you know. Side note, but this is verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And I don't want to make this too too long, so I'm not going to go into this story. You know, that was pretty much the point that Micah I stood firm and he spoke the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. Even though all those guys was against him telling him to speak otherwise, yet he, he stood firm. He stood in his integrity and he spoke the words that Yahweh delivered unto him, man. So that's the example that we should follow, you know. Um, I got two more examples. This is a uh, second Maccabees seven, which brothers should know, you know, the, uh, uh, all about this chapter. You know, I'm going uh, to uh, try to read through it um, speedily. This is second Maccabees seven. I'm starting to talk. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. Now, mind you, man, they, they, they went through all this just because they didn't want to eat swine. Keep that in mind, man. They took this whole punishment and pain and torment and torture for just not eating swine. This whole ass nigga selling out for less than that, man. This verse 2. But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. And that should be our mindset, man. Hey, 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 fuck this world. Fuck this life, man. Fuck this body. You know? We should be ready to perish than to go against Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. You know? As King David said, if I'm not mistaken, you know, but uh, it was in Psalms. So I'm going to just say, as one of the psalmists said, man. He said, we would rather fall into the hands of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai into the hands of kings, uh, 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 into the hands of these men, you know? So I'd rather obey what the Lord said do than these fucking ho-ass niggas out here, man. Like Acts 5 said, man, we'd rather obey Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai rather than men. Verse 3, 
Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. And, and that's spiritual, man, because what they trying to do to us now, man, you know, they trying to cut out our tongues, man. They trying to stop us from preaching this word, man. Hey, but they, they, hey, 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 like the old saying goes, man, your hands too short to box with your howl, man. It says, now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai looketh upon us and in truth hath comfort in us. As Moses in his song, which witness to their faces declared, saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. You know, as it says in Psalms, the, uh, 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 the hundred and sixteenth chapter, man, it says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, man. In Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the scripture says that it pleased Yahweh to, bu to bruise Yahweh Shai, man. You know, so when we suffer these things for his name's sake, man, hey, 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 that's comforting unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man, because that shows our faith, that shows our love, that shows our passion and our commitment to his word, to his name. Verse seven. So when the first was dead, after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, "Would thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body?" And that's the same thing was happening now, man. You know, all these false flag attacks with uh uh, uh you so-called Negroes and Latinos as as as, as the uh, projected terrorists. You know, they uh, uh they they they're trying to make us a mocking stock, man. You know, hey, but as the scripture says, man, hey, we are spectacle into the world and to angels, man. You know, it's all written within the scriptures, man. You know, hey, hey brothers, remember, like Peter said, man, it said, um, uh, think it not strange to fiery trial, which is to try you, man. This is all a part of our purifying process, man. This is uh, verse eight. But he answered in his own language and said, no, which in the Hebrew is like, ah, wherefore he also received the next torment in order as the former did. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. But the king of the world shall raise us up who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. It says after him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue and that right soon holding forth his hands manfully and said courageously, these I had from heaven and for his laws, I despised them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. And so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage for that he nothing regarded the pains. Now, when this man was dead, also they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said, thus, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life, man. And that's our hope, man. And that's our hope. You know, first John, uh, 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 the third chapter, I believe, you know, it says that uh, uh, any man, matter of fact, I grab it real fast. This is uh, first John three. And one, it says, behold, what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now, beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai. And it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, when who shall appear, when Yahweh shall crack those clouds, man. Because according to Isaiah, the 47th chapter, it says what? That he will not meet thee as a man. Yahweh shall coming back in the, as that angelic force, man. It says, but when we, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure, man. And that's the hope ultimately, man. Getting out these vile, wretched ass bodies, man. You know? Not ever sinning again, man. Walking in in, in the uh, uh uh walking in the entirety of the law, man. You know? Fulfilling the will of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai to the fullest, man. That's the hope, that's the desire. So to go back to uh Maccabees, um, verse 14 you know the last part because he told him he has no resurrection into life man 
which which this is another scripture to prove that Esau Edom is going to be done away with after those thousand years, man. You know, Esau Edom will be done away with after those thousand years, man. He's going to be erased off this planet. Because resurrection to life is talking about in the kingdom of heaven, man. You know? Because you will read verse 14 and you will think, oh, oh so, so Antiochus Epiphanes wasn't reincarnated no more? That was his last incarnate right here? No, man, that devil kept coming back too, man. So just letting you know that hey, those seven sons had the hope into the end, man. They were thinking about uh, 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 the end times, man. They were thinking about the end goal as, as we all should, man. You know? The downfall of this bitch, man. The rising of uh, of Yashar Allah, man. It says, verse 15, Afterward they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. And that's Esau's mentality, man. That's what he teaches, Alistair Crowley. You know, do as thou wilt. It says, Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of our power. But abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed, man. And that's going to happen, man. The trading of places, man. You know, as you were the head and we were and we were the tail, man, hey, hey, that's going to change. That's going to change real soon, as it is written in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, the ninth verse. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It says, after him also they brought the six. Who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our power. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us, and we must keep that in mind, man. For whatever situation that that, that uh, 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 the spirit will have us in, man, you know, hey, hey, we deserve it, man. We deserve it, you know. Ezra tells us that, hey, hey, we're punished less than what our iniquities deserve anyway, man. So if you, hey, hey, if you face with death, man, take it manfully, man, you know. Because we all deserve death. Verse 19. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against Yahweh, that thou shalt escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bared with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord, man. You know? And like Apostle Gabar, man, he, he said, man, you know, a heathen having more integrity than you niggards out there, that should be the ultimate cut. Hey, the, hey, hey, the scripture says a wise man uh, heareth the word, added unto it, you know. Hey, so therefore, hey, you should be extra cut that this woman has more integrity than you whole ass niggas out there, man. Heathen and women have more integrity than two thirds of Israel, man. God damn, dog. Verse 21. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, which is the Hebrew. Let you know how important our language is. Filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. And that cuts the women talking about, I brought you into this world, I take you out. No, no, bitch, no, no. This is a righteous woman. Telling, to, uh, telling it like it is, man. You know, all you did was lay on your back, bitch. Stop it. Verse 23. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generations of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own lives for his law's sake. Now Antiochus thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech while as the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. And it's the same, this the same oath, this is the same purse that Esau continually uh, offers Jake's today, man. And whole ass niggas take it, man. It said that he exhorted him with words, also assured him with oaths that he would make him a rich and happy man and that he would make him his friend, man. Which Sirach tells you to never trust your motherfucking enemy, man. Esau is a goddamn snake, man. And that's why the scripture says, who will pity the charmer who is bitten by the snake? When Esau come down on you whole ass niggas, man, hey, ain't nobody going to pity you niggas, man. I pray you, I, I pray you, how about some y'all shy, man, have a, a, a speedily judgment on you niggas, man. I pray the judgment is speedily, but I pray whatever judgment it is, is slow and gruesome, man. 
fucking hoe ass niggas, man. Verse 25. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And and, and, and look, and, and here you go with the, uh, uh, Esau's tactics, man. The Jim Crow, uh, what they call it, the Jim Crow laws, man. You know, punish the man and uh, they uh, in front of the uh, the uh, the woman and the child. So the woman to teach the child to um, to not to do those things, man. Hey, but this woman was in her right state, man. This woman had more integrity than two thirds of you fuck ass niggas out there, man. It says, verse 26, and when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this matter. O my son, have pity upon me that bare thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein, and consider that Yahweh made them of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Man, and, and that's the hope, man. You know, in Second Edges, um, I believe it's the uh, the tenth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. You know, when the Lord uh, showed Ezra that vision about that woman that was uh, mourning about her son, which was an uh, allegory about Jerusalem. He said that if you have the hope in the Lord, man, that hey, you will believe that you will receive that child again, man. And that ultimately goes to uh, 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 those who ultimately believe, man. You say you believe in, in, in the book. You say you believe in, 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 in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Then whatever uh, uh, his will is, is what it is, man. Motherfucker be like, yeah, I believe in God, but as soon as they mama die, why, Lord, why? Well, that was a part of the Lord's plan, man. That shows you the hypocrisy of our people, man. It says, um, verse 30, while she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And, and thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of the Most High. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living power be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For thou has not yet it's, it's like it, for thou has not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty Power who seeth all things. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain, keep in mind a short pain, like the scripture says in um, I believe it's Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter in the seventeenth verse, if I'm not mistaken. But it says that our light affliction, which is but for a which is but for a moment, worketh a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, Romans, the eighth chapter says the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with what shall be revealed. You know, so keep that in mind, man. Hey, hey this is a short pain. This is a short time, man. It says, um, for our brethren who are now suffered, who have now suffered a short pain are dead under Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the Most High, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers. A Romans 12 chapter, man. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, man. Those that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. You know, the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, man. Because that's what we stand for, man. We stand for truth. And that's what the laws represent. It says, beseeching the Most High, that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is the Most High, and that in me and my brethren the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons the mother died. 
It says, let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures, man. So they died in their integrity. They died in their integrity, man. And, this, and, 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 and these are the scriptures that gives us hope. These are the scriptures that strengthen us, man. This last um, last example I got. This is a uh, Second Maccabees six, and um, I'm gonna start at. So like, I'm gonna start at verse eighteen. This is uh, 2 Maccabees 6, verse 18. It says, Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. Now, notice, this is all just talking about just eating swine. You know? These, these whole-ass niggas is, is sold out for less than that, man. It says, verse 19, But he, choosing rather to die gloriously, then to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. And that's the mindset we should have, man. We should rather die gloriously than to live stained, man. And all these whole ass niggas that sold out, man, starting from the IUICs, the ITRs, the GOCCs, the uh, uh, ISUPKs, all these bootleg fucking pseudo Israelite groups, man. Hey, these guys is living stained, man. And they're going to continue to have that stain uh, uh, even on the other side, even in the kingdom of heaven, man. Because they're going to have to live with that everlasting shame and contempt. This is verse 20. It says, as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. A -A -A. And, uh, and, and today, that swine's flesh is Esau's doctrine, man. And these whole ass niggas is teaching Esau's doctrine, man. They, they, they are feeding our people swine's flesh, man. That swine's flesh is a representation of Esau's teachings, man. Of his goddamn witchcrafts, man. And all these pseudo-Israelite groups is eating the shit up and feeding it to their people, man. Verse 21, it says, But they that had the charge of that wicked feast, for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice com commanded by the king. So they, so they, hey, you, hey, just teach it. You ain't gotta live it. Just teach it, man. You know, because it go back, go a couple years back, you know, like three, four years ago, when Apostle Rakha and uh, 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 the brother Zakar, uh, I believe, if I didn't mistake his name, when they ran into Nate. His whole ass said, we pray to the name of the Lord. And I teach my congrega congregation to do so. But yet, when you watch the videos, man, it's all it's all Most High in Christ. Most High in Christ. So either you just blatantly lied or either you teaching behind closed doors, man. But what you doing out in the open, you saying Most High Christ. So out in the open, man, you, you, you making this if you eating swine's flesh. But in the closet, you, you eating something that's lawful. You know? I hope you brothers, you know, understand the analogy. But that's the, but this is what these guys are doing, man. These whole ass niggas have no integrity. It says, verse 22, that in so doing, he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them, find favor. But he began to consider discreetly. So he thought about it in his head. And as became his age, being an elder, these whole ass niggas want to be elders, man. Nate, uh, 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 Gehenna, uh, 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 Bubble Eyes, man, all these guys that got 15, 20 years of uh, uh, so-called truth under their belt. This is an example of a righteous elder, man. This is an example of how we should follow, man. It says, but he began to consider discreetly and as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head whereon was come and his most honest education from a child or rather the holy law made and given by Yahweh. Therefore, he answered accordingly and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. For it becometh not our age, said he, 
in any wise to disassemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being four score years old and ten, were now gone to a strange religion. So he being 90 years old, man, he was like, man, I ain't finna have my name stained and have these young men thinking that, that I'm, I'm going off onto some bullshit, man. And that's the mindset we should have, man. Continually praying, continually asking, continually hoping, continually begging Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai to cast us not out of his presence and to take not his Holy Spirit from us, man. To continue to lead us in the ways of righteousness, to lead us in the way of everlasting. Like uh, King David prayed in Psalms, I believe it's the 139th chapter, man. The last couple verses, you know? Verse 25. And so they, through mine hypocrisy, and desire to live a little time in a moment longer should be deceived by me and get a stain to my own age and make it abominable. See, these guys is hypocrites, man. And you how about Sham Yahweh is going to deal with each and every last one of these dudes, man. Verse 26. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. See, because these guys have no fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai in their hearts, man. Because if they did, they would consider this, man. Hey, hey, I'd rather fall into the hands of the Lord. Fuck these men, man. Like King David said, man. He said, uh, um, I grab it. So, Lockie, brother, this is all, you know, I, I didn't have a, a set lesson pull, uh, put up. This is, um, I know it's in Psalms. Psalms 118 and 6. Yahweh Basham Shai is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Not a goddamn thing unless Yahweh Basham Shai allows him to. And if the Lord do allow him to, well, hey, well, I'm suffering for my sin's sake, man. You know? So to go back to uh, 2 Maccabees 6, verse 27 now. Wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such a one as my age requireth and leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him changing the good will, they bear him a little before into hatred because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is manifest unto the Lord that hath the not so like it, that hath the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten, but in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble co uh, Slocky. A, I'm excited, Slocky brothers. Verse 31. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation, man. Which goes to this last scripture. This is... Uh, Romans chapter 15 and 4, and it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So those are the examples of integrity that we should follow, man. You know? So with that, man, I hope it was exhorting. I hope it was edifying, man. You know, hope it lifted and boosted brother's spirits, you know? Till next time, all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Blessings and salutations to you brothers and to you few sisters that watch. Shalom.